Hey everyone, this is Ken. In this video, I'm going to show you a, a few early mm -hmm. examples of indefinite integrals and some of their properties. So the first thing that I'll get out of the way is that just like the definite integral, the indefinite integral uh, satisfies the same linearity property. So if you take the indefinite integral, or the most general any derivative of two functions, that's going to be the same as the indefinite integral of f plus the indefinite integral of g. I mean, they're all functions of x, but sometimes you'll see me and others suppress the variable, or, or sometimes you could write it. That's OK. It's not always good to mix it like I did there, but, but again, that's fine. And so why is this true? Well, by definition of any derivative, this needs to be a function whose derivative is equal to f plus g. But this is a function whose derivative is f, and that's a function whose derivative is equal to g. And because the derivative is linear, um, the, the, you add them together, and then the derivative will, will give you f plus g. And so for a, an example of this, a quick example, uh, what if I take f of x equals x and g of x equals sine of x, and I want to calculate the any derivative of that. And so this rule would tell me that this is going to be any derivative of x dx plus antiderivative of sine of x dx. And let's check and see if that's true. Um, the any derivative of x is going to be x squared over 2 and plus some constant. and any derivative of sine of x, I'm looking for a function whose derivative is equal to sine of x. That's going to be negative cosine. So instead of writing plus negative cosine, I'll just write minus cosine of x. And then I could add any other constant to it. Uh, so I'll just represent that here. Instead of adding like constant c1, constant c2, it, they're, they're all arbitrary constants, so you could just collect them together and write constant c. And so is this going to be an antiderivative for x plus sine x? Well, yes, because of the fact that the derivative is linear. I can take the derivative of this by taking the derivative of each term, giving myself x plus sine x plus 0. So that'll work out. I'll show you a couple more. Um, well, first I'll show you this other linearity property, which just says that Take the antiderivative of a constant times a function. That's the same thing as constant times antiderivative of the function. And again, the reason why this is true is it boils down to the fact that you can pull out the constant from a derivative. So let's go on to some examples. So say that I want to take the antiderivative e to the x dx. Um, well, what's the answer going to be? I want a function whose derivative is e to the x. Well, I know that e to the x is its own derivative. So actually, e to the x plus any constant, take the derivative, give me back e to the x. So it gives me that nice formula. Um, what if I scaled it up a little bit? What if I asked you to find me the antiderivative of e to the 3x dx? So now I need a function whose derivative is e to the 3x. So you can start out by saying maybe e to the 3x. But when you differentiate this, the chain rule is going to come out and give you a factor of 3, not what you want. So you actually want to divide by 3 here to cancel out that factor from the chain rule. Of course, add your arbitrary constant of integration. So take the derivative of this. Now I'm going to get 0 plus 3e to the 3x over 3. It's going to give me e to the 3x. So that's where that formula comes from. And this works no matter what the number is. If you had e to the like k times x dx, that any derivative is going to be e to the kx over, over k plus, plus c, for instance. I'll show you just one more in this video. I'll show you the antiderivative of 1 over x. So this is for x not equal to 0. So I want a function whose derivative is equal to 1 over x. And when x is positive, this is going to be natural log of x. Uh, and when x is negative, this is going to be actually the, the natural log of negative x. 
I'll explain that in a minute. And, and you can encapsulate all of that by saying that the, the antiderivative of 1 over x is actually natural log of the absolute value of x. So this is for um, any interval where either x is positive or, or x is negative. So this is got some function when x is not equal to 0. And then what's its any derivative is going to be? And so there's two cases here. So first of all, if, if you're on the interval from 0 to infinity, which is like x being positive, then what's going to happen, integral of 1 over x is equal to natural log of x. We already know this from a previous video. We saw the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. You can get that with implicit differentiation. Um, so that's fine. Now, um, what about the case where we're going from negative infinity to 0? And we want to look at the antiderivative of 1 over x dx. So I claim to you that that's equal to the natural log of minus x. And by the way, the natural log of minus x in this case is natural log of absolute value of x, because when x is negative, the negative x is positive, which is going to be the absolute value. So you might say, why isn't this just equal to natural log of x? Well, there's a problem with that, because natural log is only defined for positive numbers. Uh, so when you're having the situation where x is less than 0, you can't even write down natural log of x. It has to be natural log of something positive. So if this does have an antiderivative, it would make sense that it would be I mean, this would be a good candidate for it. But the proof is in the pudding. So the derivative of this either is or isn't natural 1 over x. And if it is, then this is going to be the antiderivative, you know, plus a constant of integration, of course. So let's just check that. Let's just see what's the derivative. Natural log of minus x. And I'm going to use the chain rule here. So um, I'm going to say this is going to be equal to, this is a composition of two functions. It's the function f of x equals negative x, and then plugged in to natural log of x. So chain rule tells me that this is 1 over minus x times the derivative of the inside function. Derivative of inside function is negative x, or the inside function is negative x, so its derivative is, is negative 1. They cancel out, they just give you 1 over x. So that tells you that when x is positive, the derivative is natural log of x, which is the same thing as natural log absolute value of x. When x is negative, when you're in this interval here, then the antiderivative of 1 over x is, natu is natural log of negative x, which is the same thing as natural log of absolute value of x. You put them together and just say, well, here's the formula for x not equal to 0. Um, whether it's positive or negative, it still works out to natural log absolute value of x plus c.